about drawing near to God as God draws near to us. And not that God isn't near every day of our lives, but there's something different when the people of God come together to seek God. So we worship today, knowing that when we seek God, God promises to be found. And God is in this place. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship this morning, and we'd also like to welcome those who are joining us online this morning. We're so glad that all of you are here. My name is Michelle Jones, and I'm a pastoral intern here at St. Mark's. Um, today we get to welcome Carl Gonder. We'll join Pastor Paul up um, on stage during the sermon today to hear about the ministry that they're doing, given second chances um, to gentlemen coming out of prison. So I would like to invite everyone to go to Anchor Center after the anchor room after worship to hear about um, some testimonies of guys who have gone through the program and then also 
A lot of men here at St. Mark's have volunteered as coaches through this program to hear their story. So there's coffee and donuts already waiting for you. So also one other thing, this Friday, Luther um, Choir will be here at 7 o'clock. We could still use some help with host homes and food and serving food. So if you have any questions, Pam said that she would be happy to answer those for you. So with that, let's stand and worship. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we welcome you this morning into this place and into our lives. Speak to us through the power of your Holy Spirit so that we might be reminded of your great love for us, your unending mercy, and your amazing grace. Move in us today as we respond to your presence with praise and adoration. Through, G through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. 
Please join me now as we take time to confess our sins in silence, reflecting on how we have sinned against God and against one another. Now please join with me as we pray together, acknowledging our sin and turning to God for forgiveness. Loving God, as your children, we ask you to hold and comfort us as we confess our sins. We are a broken people in a broken world because we are estranged from you. We have chosen to serve other gods, to worship and chase after things that ultimately produce pain. Hold us now in your loving arms and remind us of your mercy. Like a good parent of a wayward child, forgive us, restore us, and lead us into new life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our God is an awesome God who does not tolerate sin in our lives. Therefore, God sent his one and only son, Jesus, to pray, pay the price that we could not pay upon the cross. By his wounds, you are healed and your sins are forgiven. Living as a forgiven child of God, may you be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to live for God alone and to love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor, that we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie. Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. the 
was Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we have celebrated with joy the festival of our Lord's resurrection. Graciously help us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Please stand for our Alleluia verse.
Our reading today comes from the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans, chapter 11, through the beginning of chapter 12. This is Paul's doxology in Romans. He writes, Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, welcome everybody to St. Mark's. I'm Pastor Paul Hennings. Everybody online, we're so glad that you're here. I had a great week this last week. I got to go see the solar eclipse. Uh, down in Texas with my parents. The, the clouds, they kind of just broke away about 30 minutes so we could see the full effect of the eclipse. And as my wife said, she said it was like a spiritual event. And uh, we saw the whole ring of fire, which made me think of Johnny Cash, but I did not sing that. Um, and it was, just a, it was just an awesome time. And then, of course, we, we got to watch our girls, the Iowa women's uh, basketball team, they're just awesome. They had such a great season, and I have to admit, I'm, I'm a Caitlin Clarky. <laughs> Is there such a thing as that? I don't know. So uh, it's just been a great week, and then my son taught me a joke that I promised I would share with you. What animal is both large and small at the same time? Jumbo shrimp. <laughs> right? Jumbo shrimp, right? Yeah, I mean, it's better than the jokes that I tell. Uh, yeah, yeah, so jumbo shrimp, which is kind of a paradox, which leads me into our scripture lesson. You see how I did that? Um, you know, Paul talks about the renewing of our minds, and I've been reading this text over the past week, and the word transform, and he says, uh, be transformed. He says, that word is where we get the word metamorphosis. So that's literally the Greek word metamorphosis. And uh, so when we were down in Texas, butterflies were everywhere. And we usually talk about butterflies, what happens between their chrysalis to being a butterfly as metamorphosis. They literally liquefy into nothing. We still haven't figured it out. How do they go to a liquid and then to a, a butterfly? And that's Paul's emphasis in this passage be transformed, metamorphosized. But what's interesting about the passage is that it's a paradox, just like jumbo shrimp, in the sense that when Paul says be transformed, he uses that word in a way that means you can't do this yourself. We call it passive. It's a passive verb. And so he literally says, you need to be transformed, but you can't do it. You have to have somebody else do it for you. And of course, He's talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. And we know what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit transforms our lives. And uh, today I'm going to be talking with Carl Gonder, who uh, is part of Hope CDA. And in April, we call this our second chance month, where we talk about people who have uh, come out of prison and have second chances at life. And when I think about a, uh, a caterpillar going to a chrysalis, going to a butterfly. Nothing speaks more to second chances than that. If you've never heard about Hope CDA, we've got a quick video to show you about their ministry. Check this out. A program in Cedar Rapids is helping men rebuild their lives by rebuilding homes. Hope Community Development Association just completed a house that sat as a neighborhood eyesore for years. KCRG TV 9's Kristen Rogers joins us live in studio after visiting the home earlier today. Kristen. Nicole, Hope CDA works to help men impacted by addiction or who have served jail time restore their lives. Their latest project is a home in Wellington Heights. I spoke with a man who worked on the home. He will soon graduate the program. I struggled with alcohol and meth both. 
and I was living that rock star lifestyle. Michael Rickert turned to Hope CDA in hopes of turning his life around. And I needed a change. I need to rebuild my relationship with Jesus. The Christian-based program teaches men job skills while encouraging them along the way. Even just the the daily routine of getting up, getting to work, and, and just trying to have a good attitude. This home on 6th Avenue Southeast is their first new build. The previous house on this property burned. Our belief was that it was a clear and present danger to the neighborhood, but uh, it, it went through court. I think it probably took three years, four years, and then along comes Hope CDA. And to save the day. Between two and nine men worked on the home for more than a year, learning construction, but it's much more than that. Honestly, our main purpose is to help guys restore their lives. So, I mean, honestly, we're saving lives. The home will be sold to a low-income family, and the new build has helped the neighborhood in the process. When you can transform and revitalize a property like this, it, it reinstills hope and the neighbors. And it's given hope to Rickert and a sense of accomplishment. It feels good to be able to look back on what you have done and take pride in it. Creating a new start for a family while getting a new start of his own. When the house was put up for sale yesterday, they were actually putting in the for sale sign while I was there this morning. Potential buyers have to make 80% of the median income in the area or less. That's no more than 71500 per year for a family of four. In the studio, Kristen Rogers, KCRG TV9 News. Hmm. Do you all see all those snow emergencies at the bottom? <laughs> oh, so glad we're done with that. Will you give a round of applause to Carl Gonder? There you go, brother. All right. Well, uh, so this, this month is Second Chance Month. You're going to hear from different, uh, different organizations that we work with, but we really love Hope CDA and everything that you're doing. Thanks for being here today. Well, thank you, and thank you for the great privilege to be here, and thanks for all that St. Mark's does in our community to promote Second Chances. Yeah. Tell us. Just give us, I think a lot of people might not know about Hope CDA, so give us kind of a rundown of what y'all do. Well, we're a Christian-based nonprofit that's all about second chances. So most of our men come to us out of incarceration or homelessness, and we give them a job, we give them a place to live, and we give them all kinds of programming and support services, everything from counseling, helping them with their medical issues, helping them get a driver's license back, uh, but we're really, most importantly, about seeing men come to Christ, get involved in the local church, and just have a new life. Yeah. And so uh, give everybody where you're located and kind of the, the, talk about the buildings a little bit, some of the homes that you're restoring. Yeah, we've done, I think now, over 30 homes in the Wellington Heights neighborhood since uh, 2008. Uh, our building is actually located right behind Come and Go on Mount Vernon Road near McKinley Middle School. And uh, yeah, we're excited to be part of uh, restoring the neighborhoods and restoring lives, of course, at the same time. Yeah. You uh, work specifically with men. Uh, tell us about that process. Uh, where, where do they come to you? Do you find them? Where, what's, what's the background of that? Yeah, we get referrals from all of the state prisons, uh, county uh, prisons as well, and a lot of referrals from ASAC, the Lynn County Health, Mental Health Access Center, uh, 180 over in uh, Davenport, which is kind of a sister organization, and many other uh, local agencies. Uh, and largely our men come to us out of addiction backgrounds, but also homelessness as well. Yep. Um, I've had the privilege of doing a few Bible studies at Hope CDA. Thursday nights, right? Is that right? Or Tuesday nights? Which one was it? Tuesday nights. Tuesday yeah. nights. There's always good food there. So if you ever need a pastor come and do a Bible study, provide food. And uh, we, we, I'm just amazed at how much these men are yearning for truth in their lives. How do you guys pour in that truth in their lives on a daily basis? Well, they work for 36 hours every week, and then we have 12 hours of class time, recovery classes. They must go to a local church. 
Uh, we have a Tuesday night encouragement night, which you've been gracious enough to come and, and share at uh, a few times. We also have classes on Friday mornings where our men are taught life skills, faith and finances, uh, a, a whole range of things uh, that we teach our men, wellness. Uh, and then they also have to go to two recovery classes. Uh, that's outsourced in our community, whether it's AA, Celebrate Recovery, uh, whatever it might be. So they're busy. Yeah. By, by 8 o'clock at night, they're, they're tired. Yeah, yeah, it's an intense, I mean, program. That, and how long are they in it again? 12 months. Okay. So our guys come, we have actually three new guys coming into our program uh, in the next couple weeks. Uh, so when we have openings, we fill those openings. And currently we, we have a waiting list, which is, yeah. uh, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, I, I know some of the stories of how God has changed men's lives there. I'm just, I'm blown away, truly. It just, we're talking 180 turns in, in men's lives. Can you share some of, some of those stories of what God's doing at Hope CDA? Sure. We've, um, we've been really blessed. This is a God thing. We've had 14 men graduate over the last two years, which is just awesome. um, unbelievable. Awesome. And they're all on different journeys. Um, last Monday, we were fortunate enough to celebrate the graduation of a gentleman named Bob Schaller, who came to us, 62 years old, lifetime alcoholic. And he really said, you know, this is it for me. Um, if I don't change my life right now, it's probably never going to happen. I've been a lifetime alcoholic. And he came into our program. He really pressed in, came to Christ in our program, got involved in a local church, pressed into his recovery, and he's still on a journey. <laughs> he's still in recovery. Uh, but that's just one example of one man that has come in and had God really get a hold of his life and have a major transformation. Yeah, it's awesome. It, it's, it's tough. I mean, not, not every guy makes it through the program. What do you think is the most significant um, most important thing that has to change in their life uh, as they go through the program? I think three things. If, if men make a commitment for Christ, that's first and foremost. If they really get serious about their recovery in terms of their recovery classes, working the steps, getting a sponsor, that's really huge. And then thirdly, if they have children and they're highly motivated to be around to see their kids grow up, yeah. then we often find that's another big barometer in, in their recovery and in their success. Yeah. Uh, what do you love most about working at Hope CDA? Because your background, uh, you, you started Hope CDA what year? About three years ago. About three years ago. And besides basketball, okay, we'll get to that in just a second, all right? <laughs> I know everybody's wondering who's taller and all this other stuff. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Whose feet are bigger? Who's, I'm sure your feet are bigger. Uh, and by the way, much better basketball player. Uh, you know, we'll get to that. But what brought you into Hope CDA, your background, um, and yeah, and where do you hope to see it go in the future? Yeah, I grew up here in Cedar Rapids, as you said, played basketball, high school and college, uh, ended up going overseas to play professionally for about 10 years, uh, wound up in Australia, was on staff at a church there for many, many years, felt God uh, calling me back to the States. Uh, both of my children were born in, in Australia and have been in the nonprofit world for about the last 20 years here. Uh, this is the best, most rewarding thing I've ever been a part of. You get a front row seat every single day to see God do something only God can do. And it's not 12 months. There's nothing magical about a 12 month program, but I have seen God do some of the most remarkable things. Uh, during the time I've been uh, with Hope CDA. And here's two guys right here <laughs> who just walked in who I have seen God do amazing things in their lives. Uh, JR, stand up. This is JR Lyon, a graduate of our program, and Bob Schaller, who I just <laughs> referenced. They're, they're going to be sharing at uh, one of the workshops yeah. here this yeah. morning. You, you have to sit, like, in the front row if you come at this time, right? So 
because everybody takes the back rows here. Is that the Lutheran way? Okay, just, just make it, just check it. Um, so we, we have folks who are involved with Hope CDA here. What are ways that people can be involved with Hope CDA's ministry? Yeah, a number of different ways. We're always looking for volunteers. In particular, we're looking for a volunteer coordinator to oversee the volunteers. But uh, you can come to Hope CDA, you can be part of our transportation team, our food roster team, our cleaning team, on and on and on it goes. There are lots and lots of opportunities to get involved at Hope. And uh, we have a a number of St. Mark's people uh, who are graciously giving of their time at Hope CDA. One of the positions as well is mentor. Just talk a little bit about that. I know we have some guys here that mentor. I think there are a lot of uh, men here who would do great at that. Uh, What is that all about? Yeah, we call it a coach, and uh, some of those coaches will be at our workshops this morning, and we'll hear from them. Basically, a coach comes alongside of one of our participants and serves as a cheerleader and a confidant, a bit of a guide and a friend. Um, It's kind of a a big brother, I guess, of sorts. And I think that's been one of the secret sauces of of Hope CDA is our coaches ministry program. So we're going to be in Anchor, which if you don't know the layout of our campus here, if you go to the right when you leave here today, there's Connections Cafe, get yourself some coffee, donut. Then you just go a little bit farther and you'll find Anchor. There'll be people that can direct you there as well. But these are just some amazing stories of what God is doing uh, through Hope CDA that that you don't want to miss out on. So we invite you to do that. Um, Before we get to basketball, what else would you like to share about Hope CDA? Any well, final words? Yeah. This, this is Second Chance Month. Yep. And so Second Chance Month, those of you that don't know, is a national initiative. I think there's 800 churches around the country that are involved, 23 states. And it's really about um, raising awareness about the importance of second chances. So that's really why we're here today. It's great to be able to promote Hope CDA and yeah. share more about Hope CDA. Um, but second chance month uh, during the month of April all over the country. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that. I totally forgot to ask you questions about second chance month. See, this is where I fail. Uh, but <laughs> Carl's here to pick me up. Well, over 2 million Americans are in prison today in the United States. We're the most incarcerated society in the world. Only China has more people in prison than the U.S. does. About 10,000 people get out of prison every single week, and the barriers are incredible to re-enter society. Um, Some research estimates that there's over 44,000 legal restrictions Uh, imposed on people with a criminal record who are looking to get back in into society. So we're looking to change that and organizations like Hope CDA are playing a leading role uh, in that. Um, One in three Americans has a a criminal record. So look around, there's a good chance somebody sitting near you or not far from you has a criminal record. Uh, That's a lot of Americans, right? And so, again, God is a God of second chances. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which which we see in the New Testament, we see in the early church, we see to this day through uh, your ministry and and through these guys' lives and and other other men that have gone through the program. It's just an awesome ministry. I can't say enough about it. They do a gala every year as a big fundraiser, and it's just an awesome experience where you get to hear about Um, different people's stories and uh, so we just appreciate being in partnership uh, with y'all and Hope CDA and and being able to celebrate Second Chance Month this month so yeah thanks so much for the opportunity to be here all right now just a few questions you played in Europe so that's like a big deal Uh, could you shoot the three ball like Caitlin No, nobody can shoot the three okay, ball like right. Caitlin. Could you pass like her? No. Okay, all right. Just to make sure. And will you stand up for just a second? Okay. So it's just, because I've wanted to know this, who is taller? <laughs> just, I, I'm pretty sure that we set a record today for the tallest preachers uh, ever here. So 
<laughs> so thanks for being here. We guys give Carl a round of applause. Thanks, mate. Thanks. One last thing I almost forgot. This is the official Hope CDA hat, Pastor Paul, and a cross that our men made in the workshop. And there's only two or 3,000 people that have one of these okay, hats. So. great. That's yeah. awesome. I, I love it. That's so good. I've been, I've been wanting one of these, so that's great. Yeah, that's one of the other things that the guys do at Hope CDA. They, they do uh, uh, wood projects, and so you should check some of that out as, as a fundraiser for them. So, Truly, it's a great organization, and I just want to lift up Hope CDA and Second Chance Month in prayer. So please join me in prayer. God, we thank you so much that you are God of second chances. I mean, that's, that's what the entire Bible is about, is about you coming into people's lives and giving them second chances. And it's all because of your love for us. It's because of your grace for us. And especially during this Easter month, we are just reminded of the victory that we have because of uh, Jesus' resurrection. So remind us that e every day we get second chances with you. And when we come to the end of our life, we get the greatest second chance ever to be with you in heaven. So we love you, Jesus, and we pray all this in your name and all God's people said, amen. amen.
we stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, Son our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born the Virgin Mary. He suffered in a Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your presence this morning. Your compassion and mercy follow us relentlessly, even though we are undeserving. Thank you for choosing us as yours and desiring to be in relationship with us. Your love is so great that you did not even spare your own son for us. Help us to share that compassion and mercy with others as unconditionally as you do. Father, this morning we pray for peace. There is no end to the violence in the, this world. We especially pray for the escalation of, virus, of violence between Iran and Israel. We pray for those in Gaza, Ukraine, and also in Haiti as well. Jesus, we know that the world needs you. From the words of the prophet Isaiah, Jesus, you were proclaimed as the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. Peace is truly found in you. We pray for those in these conflicts that need to know you, Jesus. And as children of God, help us to become the peacemakers in our community and beyond. We thank you, Father, for the opportunities you have given us to partner with organizations like Hope CDA, who are expanding your kingdom and bringing healing to those seeking second chances. Thank you, Lord, for using Hope CDA to change and transform lives. Lord, we ask that you walk alongside those who are currently in the program, and we celebrate those who have graduated and pray that their faith in you continues to develop and grow. I pray this morning for their dedicated staff and volunteers. Increase their perseverance, compassion, and faith as they do this ministry in your name. Lord, we also pray for our missionaries around the world. We remember Ali and Luke Slaughterdyke this morning in Kenya. Lord, we just ask that you grant them protection as Ali makes it through her pregnancy, getting ready to raise a baby in Kenya. We pray, pray for Brian Dregetz from Eight Days of Hope, who's now deployed for six months in the Air Force. Give him opportunities, opportunities to share the good news with those with whom he serves in the military. Along with the prayers that are in each of our hearts this morning, we pray all this boldly in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me as we say the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now as you go on your way, may God go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in singing our sending hymn.
Go in peace and serve the Lord.